Today on the Stay at Home Chef, we are doing the Stay at Home Chef Tells All. A few weeks ago, we sent out a survey to many of our viewers and readers and asked them a whole bunch of questions, one of which is, if you could ask the Stay at Home Chef anything, what would it be? And today I'm answering those questions. I haven't seen what the questions are, so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, hopefully you guys didn't just ask all hard questions. Hopefully there's some easy ones in there too. We'll find out. In addition, I'm also announcing my brand new cookbook club. If you, you guys are always asking me if I have a cookbook, and while I do have a printed cookbook, I'm a published author. Thank you very much. Um, I haven't done another one in a few years because publishing is a little bit weird and people really don't buy books anymore. So I wanted to start my own cookbook club where every month you will have a brand new ebook of my recipes sent to your email inbox. So you have all of my ebook cookbook clubs so that you can get a new cookbook and new recipes sent to your inbox every single month. If you would like to join that, I'm giving away a thousand copies. That's right, one thousand copies today. So just uh, drop comment and comment um, club and you can join my club. That's right, you can be the VIPs and enter my club. All right, so I think we are ready for our very first question. Yeah. Are we ready for our first question? We have wait a second. Okay. Where did you learn to cook such easy and delicious foods? Oh, good question. Um, I did a culinary program in high school um, where we did a lot of cooking. And so that's where I got my start. And then I also took classes in college. And um, I'm sure you've seen my, let's see, I'm a little bit backwards here. My cookbook collection back here, I have the professional chef and La Rose Gastronomique. And I probably butchered that pronunciation as I always do. Um, those are culinary textbooks, and then there's also, the other culinary textbook I have here is um, Knife Skills by Zwilling. Um, those are culinary textbooks, and they have helped me de develop a lot of skills and extra things. Um, so I, that's where I've learned to cook, and then coming up with the delicious recipes. Um, I just get ideas. I get ideas from you guys. Um, sometimes they actually come to me in dreams. I dream about food a lot. And so sometimes I'll wake up with a good idea. Um, I get inspired by restaurants and traveling. So the recipe ideas come from all over the place as well as what you want and what you're looking for. And I want to provide the best option for that. So that's where they come from. Good question. Okay, next question. How do you plan your weekly menu? How do you stay organized so you don't spend all your time cooking and cleaning? So that's probably a question like, as a mom, how do I do that? And not as, how do I do it with all my videos? But when I plan a weekly menu, like right now, I'm not shooting any videos over the summer except for the live show. And so I'm planning a regular menu for my family. Um, I actually have a spreadsheet where I put in all of the things I need from the store and that helps me organize it. So I pick a bunch of recipes that I want to make that week and then I put all the ingredients into the spreadsheet and it's organized by how the store is laid out. So I have like my store, when I enter, it's the produce section. That's really common in grocery stores. So I have produce first and then I have aisle goods and meat and seafood and then if I need anything from the bakery side, that has its own section. The frozen section has its own. The dairy section has its own and the bulk bins. My grocery store has bulk bins. And so if I need anything from the bulk bins, that has a little area. So I put it all in there, and then um, I just, I have it ready to go. I just have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I try to do only grocery shopping once a week, so I get everything on Monday, and then I have it all set to go. Um, so I try to pick a wide variety of recipes, some that are really quick and maybe some that are a little longer, and then I can mix and match. So if Wednesday doesn't go well, I can just do a really quick recipe that day. So I don't know. Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> I wasn't really expecting you to talk about my spreadsheet. Um, how did you decide to do the videos? I really enjoy how you explain recipes so easily. Oh, thank you. Um, so I actually started doing recipe demos, like the instructional videos, in 2012, um, and I, they are awful. The videos from 2012 are just awful. I was learning how I just set up like a camera and just tried making some videos, um, and they are terrible. That sound quality is awful. Half of the time it's out of focus. I mean, 
and I wasn't very good at it, but it helped me learn how to do it. And um, the reason why I did it is because um, my husband, who's a, he's a software engineer, he's a, a computer, he's a computer engineer and does a lot of software development. Um, and he said, video is the future of the internet. People are going to want to watch things rather than read things. And so I was like, oh, I, was, I had this blog that I'd kept for several years. And I was like, oh, I should add video to that. And then I can teach people how to cook. And this will be awesome. It'll be really helpful. So it just took me a long time to figure out how to do that. Um, and then those short hands-only videos. Um, now, I'm sure you think I got the idea from Tasty, from BuzzFeed's Tasty. I actually have been doing these short hands-only videos for longer than they have. Um, I actually had this discussion the other day on my personal Facebook page. Um, I started before them, and it was just it was an easier way to put out the videos, and it was faster, more entertaining. It was something I experimented with. Um, and then when Tasty started having a lot of success with that on Facebook, I started putting some of those on Facebook and I got better and better as I went along. So that's how I decided to start doing both kinds of those videos. Um, the live videos are just an extra thing that's fun. I thought it would be fun and it's an interesting challenge to be live with you guys because you never know what's going to happen. And I think that's kind of why people like these shows. You never know what I'm going to do. Tammy, I love your show. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you guys like watching. Sometimes I wonder, why would anyone want to watch me? I'm just, I'm just me. I'm Rachel. Hi. Thanks for watching. <laughs> All right, next question. How do you choose your recipes? I, did we already do this one? How did we? How did you choose your? Oh, oh choose my, okay. So choose, that was choose the videos. How do I choose my recipes that I publish on my website? I assume that's what this is talking about. Um, I am looking for what you guys are looking for, what you um, want. I get ideas. Oh, I did answer this question because I get ideas from you guys. I get inspiration from um, around uh, my travels and everything. And sometimes it comes to me in dreams. Okay, next question. What is your go-to quick weeknight dinner? Um, that would probably be pizza. Actually, I do. I make my own homemade frozen pizzas. I've done videos for that, so you guys have probably seen it. If you haven't, go Google the stay-at-home chef frozen pizza. I almost always have frozen pizzas that I've made, homemade, homemade crust and everything, um, in my freezer ready to go. And so I, I know that my kids will always eat it, and I have a lot of different flavors. We, have, we always have pepperonis, but we also have like... Um, I do a cilantro lime chicken pizza that's really good, and we have like supreme with all the toppings and stuff, so that we always have something that everyone will like in the family, and everyone will be happy, no one will complain, and it's really quick to make. So that's my go-to. Why do you hate electric stoves? This comes up um, surprisingly a lot. Um, electric stoves, I do not like them. I prefer to have a gas stove. Um, I like to have the actual flame. Um, not only does that help you control your heat better, but it also just gives you more options in the kitchen. Like, what if I need to roast marshmallows on my stove? I don't want to do that on an electric stove. I want to do it on a gas stove with a flame. Duh. And I love lighting my oven mitts on fire. That's why I like it. No, really, I just like that the, um, the temperature control and the options on it. That's why I like having a gas stove. I hate cooking on electric stoves because I just feel like they take forever to heat up and they just, they just are not as good. I also don't like induction. I know, I know. Bobby's saying club, that's because if you write club, I'm giving away a thousand ebooks today. One thousand ebooks as I launch my new cooking, my e-cookbook e club. I'm getting like winded here. Um, I should exercise more. But so I'm launching my cookbook club where you can get a new cookbook ebook delivered to your inbox every month with my recipes in it. Um, and that way you always have something new and fresh for your kitchen. They'll be seasonal and appropriate for the time of year. And you can get to have it delivered straight to your inbox, which is really cool. It's going to be so much better than published cookbooks. I, I do have a cookbook. It's back here. Um, this, this one is mine. This one is mine. You can buy it off of Amazon still. Um, but I want to do more than that. I don't want to go through a publisher anymore. People don't actually buy cookbooks very much anymore. I would rather spend my time giving it to you guys directly. So you should join my club by typing club. What is your favorite summertime activity? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I really like to spend time outside in the summer. 
Um, I love going up. We have a canyon. We have actually several canyons. We live at the base of um, a mountain range, and so there's lots of canyons, and we like to spend time up there. I like to go on walks slash hikes. I'm not, um, it's really hard for me to hike. I go on walks that are sometimes long. Um, and lately we've been trying to get into paddle boarding. That's something that's hard for me. Um, and so it's new and it's challenging for me, so I like to do it. Um, just usually it leaves me kind of sick at the end, but I enjoy it. I like to be tricked into exercise, so it's kind of funny, but I do. I like to be tricked into exercise, and so um, it's a fun thing that I can do. My kids have these little kayaks that they go out on these little lakes that are up the canyon, and it's really fun. I like to spend time outside. Okay, next question. How long have you been cooking? I've been cooking since I was about 12. I cooked a little before that, but my mom kind of, I had a, a bake sale for orchestra. I played the cello um, that I needed to make cookies for, and my mom said, here's, here's earn, earn the money yourself so that you can go on, like I think we were going to Magic Mountain, um, and I was trying to earn money for that, and so I, she gave me a recipe for cookies, and I tried to make it, and I, it called for a quarter teaspoon or a half teaspoon of baking soda. And I was like, oh, I can't find anything labeled that. But here's a half, and it was a half cup. So I put that in the cookies, and they, the cookies were like the most massive cookies ever, and they tasted terrible. And I wondered, what's the difference? And so I started to learn to cook then. Anyway, so it's been about uh, 20 years. Is cooking your greatest passion? No. Um, my greatest passion is my family. Um, and spending time with them, but cooking is pretty much up there at the top. Yes, being tricked into exercise is the best. I like that's. I have to be tricked into exercising. I really do. I'm like a child. All right. What made you start this journey to be an online chef? So, back in 2008 is when I first started putting recipes online, and it was because I had like a family vlog. Like, do you remember that when like moms? You'd have like, like my husband's name is Steven, so we like have Steven and Rachel blog, and we just talk about our family and stuff, and it was a way to keep in touch um, with what was going on. And I had started one of those because we had moved away from family. We moved to California, and um, so that was just a way to keep in touch. And then I, had, I was developing all of these recipes. I had just become a stay-at-home mom, and um, I needed something to do because I was just going crazy at home. And I was developing all these recipes and just pursuing this cooking passion that I had and cooking through these culinary textbooks back here. And I started writing my own recipes and I had them in these little notebooks all over the house. And people would ask me, can I get that recipe? I'm like, oh, it's like in a notebook in my house. And so I started just putting them online at this, this old blog, it's called Rachel's Kitchen. Um, and then in 2011, after I had no, 2012. So after I had my daughter, um, I decided to make it into a business to give me something to do. Um, I became disabled during my pregnancy with my daughter. Um, I, it turns out I had Addison's disease and I had like heart, liver, and kidney failure while I was pregnant with her and it was, it was debilitating and I was um, bedridden for about um, eight months. Well, no, pregnancy is ten months. So I was bedridden for about nine months um, and I became legally disabled. Like I have handicap placards and everything, um, and a lot of things are really difficult for me to do. And I kind of figured I'd never be able to hold a nine to five job again in my life. And uh, I knew that people were turning these blogs into businesses, and I decided that I could do that too. And I, I felt like I needed to prove something, um, to prove that I still had value. Um, and that I could still contribute to society as a disabled person. And so um, I started this blog that has turned into this Facebook page and these Facebook watch shows and YouTube channel and Instagram pages and everything. This whole big business where I reach, right now I'm, I think, like 100, no, like I think it's 200 million people each month see my work. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm just this disabled mom um, who loves to cook, and I get to be in the homes of 200 million people every month. That's crazy talk. It's crazy. So, but that's, that's what got me to do this, um, is that I became disabled, and I needed to prove something. So, 
I, I think I've proven it. I don't know. I don't know. Um, how do you earn income as a stay-at-home chef? And it is it the best decision you made so far? Um, besides like family and stuff, but like I, um, yeah, it's a really great decision. Um, it's been a lot of hard work. Um, I think sometimes people think, oh, these influencers, like it's just this get rich quick scheme. Uh, unfortunately, not for me. I think it's happened to like a couple people, maybe. But for me, it's been years and years of working for free. <laughs> um, been doing this since 2012. Um, and I make money through ad revenue. So when you go to my website, you see ads on my website, and that's how I pay for all of the ingredients and the camera equipment and things like that um, in order to run all of this and give you recipes for free. Because see, you get the recipes for free, um, and I do all the work. And so the ads pay for it all. So um, and if you ever see ads like in a video or something that's helping to support this because it's actually super expensive. Like I don't even want to tell you how much money I spent on this last year. Like it would make you sick inside. Sick. Sick. It makes me sick. Um, how long does it take to make one video? Um, the videos that I'm in it where I'm like doing a demonstration, they take about an hour. Well actually, okay, the answer is about the same. So the videos where I'm in it, they take about an hour to make, depending on the recipe. If it's a really long recipe, it may take a little bit longer. If it's a really easy recipe, it might be slightly shorter, but it takes generally about an hour. The same thing with the videos that is just my hands cooking and a shot from above, you know. Um, those take me about an hour to make as well. So an hour per video. How do you make time to make so many videos? This is my full-time job. So I make time for it. I mean, this is um, how we feed our family. Um, not just like feed them, but also like put the roof over their head and um, pay for piano lessons. My kids just walked in. They just got back from piano lessons. So um, yeah, that's, we make time for it. And it's a lot of my time. I actually, it's not just full-time work. Usually I'm working like 60 to 80 hours a week. This summer I'm trying to only work like 30 to 40 hours a week because um, probably been working 60 to 80 hours a week for about two years straight now and that's like rough. I talked about it on Instagram yesterday that I'm, I'm uh, summering and Siri kept correcting that to simmering and I think that's, I'm taking things off the rolling boil right now and I'm just simmering. So that's a good explanation for what I'm doing right now. Okay, next question. I hope you guys are enjoying this. And if you want to join my cooking cookbook club and get an ebook sent to your inbox every month, Join by just saying club and our little bot will send you a message. What is the one kitchen appliance you think every home cook should own no matter what their skill level? I hope that answers your question. I love my KitchenAid. I'm a huge fan of KitchenAid. KitchenAid doesn't pay me any money. KitchenAid, hello. You should, we should partner on something. I keep advertising your product just because I love it. Don't you guys think that KitchenAid should like do a huge giveaway for you guys or something? I think so. I think they should give away a bunch of KitchenAids because I advertise this for free all the time and because I just love my KitchenAid. I think you guys should all have one. We should do a giveaway. How can I get a hard copy of your recipes? So I don't have my, um, I don't have a book of my recipes because I'm putting out new ones all the time. So instead I did my ebook cooking club. So just type club and you can join my cooking club and get that delivered to your inbox every month. Um, there's a small fee for that because there's a lot of production costs for publishing. Um, if you want my one hard cover, it's not even a hard, it's a soft cover cooking book. I did an idiot's guide. So these recipes are super easy and delicious. I think it has all five stars on Amazon. Not to brag or anything, but it's been out for a few years now, and it has like four and a half to five star reviews on Amazon, so people love it. Or you can just type club and get all of my new recipes. Um, not just the new ones, there's also a lot of other ones as well, and delivered to your inbox, so it'll all be perfect for that month. So you should join. You should join. Do you film in your home, Kaylin asks. Uh, yes, I do. This is my house. Crazy, huh? Like, it's crazy. Um, it kind of drives me insane. I really want to move into a studio kitchen so that we can live more normal. Like, so maybe I could have a messy kitchen all the time. Um, that would be really, really nice. Um, but moving into a studio is really hard and it's really expensive. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, this is my house, guys. This is my house. 
My, my house is devoted to cooking. It's crazy. <laughs> um, everyone's typing club. Thanks, guys. We're giving away a thousand free ebooks today. So, all right, next question. Can we be friends? Can I meet you? Okay, good question. That's actually a really good question. Um, because I have millions of fans online, um, I do not accept personal friend requests on Facebook, and it's not anything to do with you, like it's not meant to offend you or anything. In fact, I've disabled that feature. You probably can't send me a friend request um, because too many people were doing that. Um, I need to keep my personal life personal and my public life separate, and so we can't be friends on Facebook. Um, People try to send me personal messages on, like, to my personal Facebook page, and I don't read those. I had to stop. I actually have a lot of creepers um, and people who send me inappropriate things, and so I just have a, like a personal policy. I don't, I don't respond to any of those. You can always email me, um, and as long as you're not super creepy, I'll probably email you back. Um, but I do have to keep my personal life separate from my public life, and I hope you guys understand that. Um, it's just, it's hard. It's already like awkward for me if I'm out in public and people recognize me. I love saying hello to you guys, but like I'm super awkward and shy and like I don't know what to do. Um, and and sometimes like it, I wonder if like I'm safe. Um, so I do keep that separate and that keeping that separate makes it a lot easier for me to say hello to you in person. And if you want to meet me, um, I've run into so, like lots of fans just like when I'm like in the airport or at a hotel or traveling, or if I'm just at the grocery store, or I mean, I was touring, oh, I was doing the, we have a parade of homes where you can go look at people's houses, I was doing that, and I ran into a fan there. And that's always really fun. So as long as I keep my personal life separate from my public life, I feel a lot more safe doing that, and I feel like my kids are safe. Um, if you want to meet me, and like be at somewhere, like I am, I, I'm attending two events this year, where it's actually like, I'm there. You can meet me. Um, uh, I'm going to VidCon next week in Anaheim. So if you're at Disneyland or something next week and you want to pop over to VidCon and say hi, I'm there. Um, and then I'm also at CVX Live, which is held where I live in Utah. Um, but people come from all over. People actually come from other countries to attend CVX Live as well. And you can get tickets for that. They're actually really cheap. I'm one of the partners of CVX Live, so I'm very visible there, and you can definitely find me and meet me. Um, it's in September, and you are more than welcome to come. There's a ton of creators, so you can meet a lot of interesting, cool, amazing people. I know a lot of these people, and they are totally worth meeting, so just go to cvxlive.com and buy your tickets, and you can meet me. I'll be there, and I'd love to meet you. And if enough of you say you're going to come, maybe I'll actually do a booth and like a meet and greet. I don't know. I've, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to give myself one because I am afraid that nobody will actually want to meet me. So, but if you do, I'll give myself a booth time and we can like set up a whole thing and you can meet me and talk to me. All right, next question. Now I feel like I, I feel like I'm in a blushing. Oh, we're, we're, those are all the questions that we're going to do today. Good, because I'm like I need a drink now. Like my throat is just dry from all this talking. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my tell all. Give a lot of details there. Um, that wasn't really anticipating. But thank you for asking your questions and submitting your questions in our survey. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for watching today. And as always, we'll see you later.